best movies are the ones you can watch time and time again and still find new things to enjoy. Especially when it turns out that the whole story was wrapped up in a throwaway moment that you might have initially missed, whether it's a strange conversation that turns into a revealing premonition or scenic clues planted throughout. These films are far smarter than it seems when it comes to their storytelling. Now if I was committed to this gimmick, then I'd tell you what number one was, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Come on, you've got to watch to the end to find that out. With that in mind, I'm Ellie with What Culture here with 10 movies that clearly foreshadow their own plot. Number 10. It Chapter 1 Bloody Beverly When Bill decides to get arty and draw a picture of Beverly, it seems innocuous enough that he's drawn it in red ink. There's no ulterior filmmaking motive there. No, nope, none at all. At least not until water starts dripping from the ceiling onto her likeness and makes the pencil splatter like blood across the page. And where have we seen this before? Not only does this reference Beverly's fear that she faces up against when Pennywise is out and about being a dick, when he causes supernatural blood to shoot out of the pipe in her sink and stains her bathroom something awful, but it's an exact replication and premonition of Beverly waking up in the sewers. After being abducted and taken to Pennywise's lair, she's woken up by splashes of blood falling on her face in an exact replica of Bill's drawing. Which means she was ultimately revealed her own fate before we ever saw it play out on the screen. How creepy is that? Number 9. Shaun of the Dead – Animals Live in the Shed when thinking about movie foreshadowing, Shaun of the Dead's opening rundown of how the plot works out through the pub crawl plans is one of the most well-known, and one of the very best. Edgar Wright often includes foreshadowing like this in all of his films, but it's Shaun of the Dead that it was the most intelligently woven into conversation. We'll have a Bloody Mary first thing, have a bite at the king's head, couple at the little princess, we'll stagger back here, bang, back at the bar for shots. And that's exactly what happens. If there was ever a more literal phrase spoken that was overlooked by so many on first watch, we haven't heard of it. However, there's a couple of other lines less well spoken about that are just as excellent in their execution. Pete yells at Ed during an argument, you wanna live like an animal? Go live in the shed. And lo and behold, that's precisely where Ed ends up. But Ed finishes their argument with, next time I see him, he's dead, and Pete then becomes one of the undead horde before their next meeting is just the cherry on the cake. Number 8. Fatal Attraction – Bunny Boiler If you ever needed evidence on why you should stay faithful in your relationship, and let's be honest, you probably shouldn't, then let Fatal Attraction serve as an ill-advised lesson to you. When lawyer Dan has a fling with book editor Alex, she becomes obsessed, misunderstanding their casual relationship and refusing to be ignored when she claims herself to be pregnant. As the film escalates, Alex engages in increasingly more dangerous and erratic behaviour as Dan tries to hide his extracurricular boning activity from his wife, until Alex steals Dan's daughter's pet rabbit and leaves it to boil on their own stove. That is… that is… wow. There's a moment before this, however, that ironically warns Dan exactly what's coming for him when they're courting. When blowing her off to walk the dog, Alex tells him, just bring the dog over, I'm great with animals and I love to cook. After what happens to the poor rabbit, Dan is probably very glad he didn't take the dog over. Dog soup doesn't sound very tasty. In addition, Dan quips that Alex has a look that could kill before she gets a little bit stabby later on in the film. Words really are his worst enemy in this movie, aren't they? Number 7. Total Recall – Blue Skies on Mars Total Recall consistently toys with what's real and what's not. Putting Doug Quaid into a machine that implants fake memories taken out of a WoW checkout log to get some much needed excitement in his life. Quaid chooses the spy package, which results in the film playing out as if the Recall machine has broken from memories that already existed, suggesting a previous life as a secret agent. It's never quite ascertained whether this is all just a creation of the Total Recall experience and we're simply watching what he paid for, as all the plot points he selected end up happening but seem to have been born from coincidentally matching his established past life, that is, until the very end. The worker in Recall tells Quaid as he settles into the machine that he'll see blue skies on Mars as a way of emphasising the unreal brain trip he's going to be sent on. It's a throwaway comment, but as Mars' atmosphere becomes breathable at the film's climax, the skies turn blue. It all but confirms that it's definitely a dream he's been living. Even if you believe in coincidence, this one is definitely pushing the mark. Number 6. The Machinist – The Ghost Ride 
Christian Bale's dedication to losing 63 pounds for a movie role still remains a startling record, with his skeletal physique one of the defining features of dark and broody drama The Machinist, featuring a machine worker suffering from internal turmoil that isn't revealed until the very end of the film, there's hints seeded throughout at what could really be going on, if you can swim through all of the weirdness that surrounds the rest of the narrative, that is. One such defining moment is when Trevor and Nicholas go on the ghost train ride, in perhaps the best plot twist of all time that the cheesy carnival ride is actually scary. The trip in the dark turns sour when the plastic models take on an all too real quality, featuring a woman at a gravestone, a guilty hanged man, and a bloodied car crash. This turns out to be a reflection of Trevor's guilt at accidentally killing Nicholas in a hit and run accident a year previously, projecting his anxious disposition onto the models in the tunnel after repressing it for so long. And this all becomes clear by the film's final moments. Number 5 Magnolia Exodus 8 2 in Magnolia, a tapestry of stories happen in San Fernando Valley over 24 hours, and there's one connecting string that draws them all together in a most interesting fashion. Much like Jim Carrey's descent into madness over discovering everything links back to one number in the number 23, Magnolia hides a numerical secret throughout its narrative wrapped up in the digits 8 and 2. Watching closely reveals that the weather forecast is 82%, Sydney's parents' apartment is 682, the Forensic Science Convention has a start time of 8.20, a gambler wants a 2 in blackjack but gets an 8, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's a whole host of other 82 related throwaway moments constantly pushing this combination to the forefront of the viewer's mind. But why? Well, the whole film leads up to the rain of frogs that fall from the sky, but there's one place such a bizarre phenomenon has already been mentioned. Looking at the Bible in, you guessed it, Exodus 8-2, there's a mention of a plague of frogs. The very same one that plays out in the close of Magnolia. Number 4, Final Destination, The Opening Credits it would seem pretty obvious to say that the opening title cards of Final Destination spell out what happens in the movie once you've watched it, but there's a reason it feels more intelligent than perhaps given credit for. As the first movie begins, we see a spinning fan, a picture of a guillotine, and various other weaponry that actually denotes how exactly each of the characters dies as the film goes on. Whilst this is foreshadowing in itself, that the credits give us the clues at all is another big hint at what actually happens throughout the film, as death always provides premonitions and omens to those about to go through an unpleasant end. The whole point of Final Destination is that the characters know they're going to die, but not when, and have to try and figure out from environmental clues what's going to happen to them. The fact that Final Destination offers this up at the beginning is a hint to observant watchers both what is going to play out on screen, and also the nature of why. I mean, that's pretty deep when you think about it. Number 3 The Shawshank Redemption – Salvation Really Does Lie Within the Bible IMDb's greatest movie of all time and masterclass in filmmaking, The Shawshank Redemption has plenty of sneaky nods to the events that transpire across the length of the film. There's two moments that stand out as some of the best, however, with the first coming as the warden hands the new inmates their very own copy of the Bible, stating that salvation lies within. Oh boy, warden, are you in for a treat? Of course, the Bible turns out to be where Andy carves out a lovely hole for his rock hammer, smuggling his key to freedom in the chapter of Exodus, which feels even more appropriate for a word that also defines mass departure. Andy leaves the Bible in the warden's safe with a note smugly celebrating his own brand of salvation he derived from the book, just to rub it in just a little bit. Can you really blame him? The second nod comes when Red tells Andy to not have such tea pipe dreams about escaping prison. Just take a moment with that one. Number 2 Mad Max Skull Premonitions Mad Max Fury Road, aka the best piece of action George Miller has put out since his Babe Pig in the City years, and that's not a damning comment, both are great, is a pretty straightforward film. It's essentially one long car chase through the desert, with grisly looking Immortan Joe attempting to reclaim his property in the form of beautiful women he uses as baby machines, willing to get them back by any means necessary. Mad Max, the good egg that he is, joins up with Imperator Furiosa and her girl band and the gang of meddling kids ride for their lives for a solid two hours of explosions and death, but get this! There's a way the film tells you exactly what's coming. As the camera zooms in on the skulls on the wall rig, it's a sign that in the next scene, someone's going to bite the dust. I mean, it's not much in a film riddled with people dying and fiery destruction, but it's a neat little nod that proves the devil is in the detail, even where you'd least expect it. Number 1. Get Out, Deer Hunter 
In a film as cleverly paced and built up as Get Out, there's as much of an undercurrent of nuanced symbolism as there is an outright face-up to the racial contents of the movie, providing different layers that can be unpacked and dissected about modern society as the narrative plows onwards. One such point that is reiterated in the beginning of the movie is the Armitage family's lack of empathy and feelings of animosity towards Deer, which seems like clue enough in itself that they aren't all that nice, but with some historical background brought into the mix, a far more chilling reality comes into play. Post-Reconstruction America used the analogy of a buck in racist slurs towards people who refuse white authority. If we look at Dean Armitage's hatred of deer and likening them to vermin, and Rose's complete lack of emotion when killing one on the road to her family home, the implicit Armitage racism is all but spelled out on screen with this metaphor. And then of course, that Chris then ends up killing Dean with the antler of a mounted buck suddenly becomes all the more satisfying to see. 